Good evening, I'm still reporting on the coup. Right now, please like, share, and subscribe in the description box below. I, like many other Americans, have been waiting to see what President Trump would have to say about today's drone attack in Jordan on a U.S. military base which killed three Americans and wounded many more. The MSM is playing this up as the opening salvo to World War III. That made me suddenly realize how convenient this is for Obama-Biden. What will this type of news be covering up with the new war news that is bound to overwhelm viewers of the MSM in coming weeks. Here is what President Trump had to say about it. Three years ago, Iran was weak, broke, and totally under control. Thanks to my maximum pressure policy, the Iranian regime could barely scrape $2 together to fund their terrorist proxies. Then Joe Biden came in and gave Iran billions of dollars which the regime has used to spread bloodshed and carnage throughout the Middle East. This attack would never have happened if I was president, not even a chance. Just like the Iranian-backed Hamas attack on Israel would never have happened. The war in Ukraine would never have happened, and we would right now have peace throughout the world. Instead, we are on the brink of World War III. This brazen attack on the United States is yet another horrific and tragic consequence of Joe Biden's weakness and surrender. This terrible day is yet more proof that we need an immediate return to peace through strength so that there will be no more chaos, no more destruction, and no more loss of precious American lives. Our country cannot survive with Joe Biden as Commander-in-Chief. Here is a small sample of Newsmax's coverage today. Now this just in, Hamas says the kamikaze drone attack on the barracks of the U.S. troops in Jordan is directly tied to U.S. support for Israel's war on Gaza. Spokesperson Sami Abu Zuri saying to Reuters, quote, the killing of three American soldiers is a message to the U.S. administration that unless the killing of innocents in Gaza stops, it must uh, confront the entire nation. This is frightening. This yeah, is frightening this how, is it's, how it's spiraled out of control. Let's bring in our experts. We're joined by Robert Wilkie, former Secretary of Veterans Affairs. Also with us, retired Brigadier General Blaine Holt. Uh, Secretary Wilkie, what do you make of this? Uh, well, it's directly tied to the weakness of the Biden administration. If we begin with the debacle in Afghanistan, the transfer of billions of dollars to the theocratic fanatics in Tehran, and just recently, 159 attacks on American interests and shipping, and the only response has been one-off missile attacks where, disgracefully, the Biden administration tells the Houthis or whomever that we're going to attack them so that they can uh, re reduce the number of casualties that will occur. Uh, if this wasn't uh, real, we'd think this is something out of a Mel Brooks movie. But this is the price of weakness, and this is the price that we are now paying for having a clown college for a national security team in the White House. And General Holt, what should the U.S. do? Well, well, John, the first thing you have to do is start with a strategy, and you have to validate why your forces are even there in the first place. Um, I'm not suggesting that we do a full pullout because that's exactly what they're begging us to do right now. But we, we should have gone back much earlier on and said, what are we trying to achieve in Iraq, Syria, Jordan, and the Middle East? Why are these carrier groups necessary there? Uh, because if you don't allow the commanders on the ground to defend themselves, then uh, eventually your enemy will find that out. Um, this is just going to be the start of this. They're Iranian forces, John. The, 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 the Hamas is an extension of Iran. Uh, the Houthis are an extension of Iran. It's time for us to go after national security uh, issue number one, which is our national security team. Diplomatically, we're going to have to show some bicep, and we're going to have to have cost impositions on Iran and the regime, and, those, and we have to stand by Israel without an ounce of daylight, and we have to hustle our butts into Congress and tell them that we may be ending up in a war here because we didn't have a strategy. Now let's go back to that Newsmax intro. 
that unless the killing of innocents in Gaza stops, it must uh, confront the entire nation. This is frightening. It must confront the entire nation. This is frightening. What could that mean? Here are two options. It could mean that all those thousands of military-aged men who came across the southern border in the last month, with that many to work with, certainly Iranian forces, could pull off a gigantic simultaneous terror attack. But even worse, what if Obama-Biden could actually incite a shooting war between forces loyal to them and the 25 states who signed on to assist Texas by sending their own deputies and National Guard troops down to help. Never happen? Well, look what's headed to Texas on railroad cars. Live from my backyard. Lots and lots of federally supplied military equipment. And we're not just talking about guns and protective gear. This is the heavy stuff as well. Certainly a civil war is a dream come true for the Iran-China axis. That would certainly command sufficient coverage by the MSM to eliminate all but a few seconds of impeachment coverage, don't you think? But guess what else? Either option, massive terror attack or civil war, would make it easy for Obama-Biden to do what? Declare martial law, enforce total censorship, and land folks like us in jail. Because Obama-Biden has been softening up the MSM with fearsome warnings about MAGA extremists for many months. Remember, these people plan ahead months in advance. We just have to demonstrate that he will not take power um, by, uh, if, we, uh, if he does run, uh, making sure he, uh, under the legitimate efforts of uh, our Constitution, does not become the next president again. It's important to remember this moment. What did he say? It was kind of blah, 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 blah. But he said something very suspicious, actually incriminating for him. Well, we just have to demonstrate that he will not take power by if we, if he does run. I'm making sure he, under legitimate efforts of our Constitution, does not become the next president again. That is a far cry and a very weird cry from saying, I'm just going to have to beat him at the ballot box. I'm still reporting from just outside the former citadel of world freedom. Good day.